Oh, you think the Chinese people only want to work? Well, guess what? I want to break that stereotype and not work. A lot of things that rappers say are simply not true. No, they didn't. Chris Wu just got sentenced to 13 years in prison. All right, everybody, welcome to the Hot Pop Boys. We got four viral articles coming out of China. We got them from Next Shark. And, uh, you know, nowadays it is kind of fun to keep up with the news out there, even though it's uh, in a different country. But you know what? Globalization. Number one, Andrew, this news is going super viral on a lot of different platforms right now. Andrew, Chris Wu just got sentenced to 13 years in Beijing prison for, you know, various things. He's about to get deported. He got fined $86 million. Andrew, if you're in a foreign country and he's like a Canadian citizen, even though he's a Chinese pop star, do not do crime. I think when China looks at celebrities that are acting bad and have bad behaviors, they, they take it extra hard because they understand that they have a lot of influence and a lot of responsibility because you get paid a a lot you get to live a cool life you get very famous right but then if you mess up that's going to affect more people and and that's kind of from what i understand how china kind of sees it so yeah. yeah i mean hey listen you messed up and and you know this is what happens listen if you get caught drug smuggling in a lot of countries over in asia it could be automatic life imprisonment or like even execution so i'm just saying they got a whole different system there and a different set of standards story number two viral coming out of china andrew is from hunan province an eight-year-old boy disobeyed his parents he ignored his chores because he wanted to watch tv so his parents came home they're like oh yeah you're a glutton for tv so now your punishment is to watch tv until 5 a.m. See how you like it. And other people say, yeah, my son, he likes hamburgers and KFC, so I made him eat that food for three days. Now, he no longer wants a fast food and junk food. Yeah, it, it, uh, once you get too much of what you originally wanted, it kind of kills the fun. I remember this one time when I was kind of young, mom actually bought a can of beer and had me take one sip in front of her and it was so bitter and disgusting at the time, I was like, it totally deterred me from drinking beer for several years after that. And then mom was like, see, I told you you wouldn't like it. So don't drink beer ever again. At the end of the Next Shark article, Andrew, it basically brings up a study about tough parenting, AKA tough Asian tiger parenting. And some says that Andrew, even though there is some research to show that it does have some good successful outcomes in terms of the kids, you know, career path, you know, they're gonna do what they do, do their chores of their career. It also could manifest depression later on in a child's life. Andrew, what do you think? Because this is a big debate in the Asian community right now, because obviously for the old school, they were just about the tiger parenting. But the newer parents, you know, they're trying to find a mix, a hybrid, get the upside without the downside. Can you do it? I think that if you're going to come down hard on your kids and really like uh, be a super strict tiger parent, you also got to give them some things that they like. You have to have that balance. Uh, and, and it can be different, but you don't have to ease up on grades, but you got to ease up on other parts of their life. I, I feel like that, yeah. that's the 2022 way. I think that that's the big thing, man. I'm not going to lie. A lot of Chinese parents from the old school, man, they just do stuff that, you know, they just make you do stuff you don't want, but they do not allow you to do stuff that you do want. Number three, Andrew is in the same vein. China announced that, yeah, we beat the war on video game addiction, but now we are losing the final boss war to Douyin and Bilibili. The kids, they love the short form video so much. Yeah, I mean, I do think that there's even a possibility that they start regulating the time on Douyin even more. I know that a lot of people say, oh, Douyin is all these uh, <laughs> scientific videos and educational videos. That's actually not true. There's actually a lot of stupid videos on Douyin too. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that they're going to start regulating just like they regulated video games, even though it was maybe easier to regulate video games because they had to like log in with a certain like ID login that was like tied to I don't know their identification and stuff like that so i guess it was easier to stop but i don't know maybe they got to make like better edutainment games or something like you said and you're earlier from point number two if you take something away you also have to provide people something that they didn't have as well it's always a balance it's a give and a take or i guess in china's case more like a take 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 at least one give for every take 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 yeah, listen i mean i think that anytime there's like an issue with a certain group of kids in china since there is such a huge gigantic population in china anytime some of these like stories pop up it still involves like thousands of children you know that are like complaining about this or a thousand families feel this way but i also think like at the end of the day china's uh china's got to ask themselves like why is it that like everybody always wants to just play video games and be on do yin you know, yeah, like maybe what because are we they not seem, those seem like the best options for dopamine, serotonin, endorphin release right. in the body. 
Can you provide a societal alternative so that kids don't only want to turn to video games and short form videos? Right, because people turn to things that they feel like that's their best option to get what they want for the moment. Last but not least, Andrew, we got viral news story number four coming out of China, Andrew. Uh, and it sort of ties into number two and number three, Andrew, because things are so unfun or unfair or people are no longer believing in the Chinese dream of the previous two, three, four decades. Andrew, Tangping, which means to lie down and Bai Lan, which means to lay let it rot are becoming popular slacker slogans for like people who maybe have a little bit of money from their family, but they're like, yeah, I just kind of give up. I just like party or just do my like interests every day because if I put a lot of time into my career, I'm still not going to get rich or the, you know, all the spots above me and my company are already taken up. It's no fair. It's no fun. I just want to like cruise by in life, be a slacker. It's almost like a weed smoking, like stoner slacker attitude, Andrew, but mine is the weed because that's not available. I recently watched a lot of videos on this type of culture happening in China. And it's really from kids who are told growing up to work very hard and that they're gonna move up, but then they don't really see the way up. So then they're just kind of bowing out of the game. And I mean, it affects men and women, but I think a lot of the guys are giving up too. But I think it's different because, you know, in America, we have like this free market where you have all these different side hustles you could do. You can like uh, trade options on Robin Hood or get rich off Shiba Inu. Well, you know, you did get rich off Shiba Inu. I don't know about it anymore. But there's also Amazon drop shipping and all these hustles that you can do to make money in America because America is such a money focused society. But in China, you don't always have all those other side opportunities. So these kids are told to focus on climbing the traditional ladders and they don't like the tra traditional ladders. They don't like what they're seeing and they don't like what they're getting. So I kind of feel bad for them. Yeah, I do feel bad for it. I think anytime you look at a large cultural phenomena, and obviously it's not a hundred percent of everybody that's like 20 to like 40 going through Tangping and Bai Lan, you know, which is lying down or let it rot, but like a pretty sizable portion. And like you said, Andrew, anything that's sizable on a ratio basis across like 1.35 billion people is a ton of people. I hope that if people like do give up in life, they're at least able to like do it in a more constructive way. You know what I mean? Like, let's say, for example, you want to play basketball all day long. And that's your way of like quitting your job because you're no longer trying to move up the ladder, right? At least maybe like start a basketball company or like a small little side hustle involving basketball leagues or be entrepreneurial in your mindset. Right. And I mean, maybe uh, these people just wanted to break stereotypes. Oh, you think the Chinese people only want to work? Well, guess what? I want to break that stereotype and not work. Yeah, I think in a country full of like model minorities and overachievers, you know, China reached this like burnout phase pretty quickly because the stages of development like were so hyper accelerated over the past couple of decades. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Nobody can really change society that easily. It's usually like a thing that takes like millions of people to reorient. All right, you guys, let us know what you thought of the stories in the comments section below, guys. Um, I think there's a lot to take away. If you're a Chinese American, sometimes it's kind of cool to see stuff happening in China because guess what? There's takeaways even about tiger parenting for the way we live our lives here in America or the West. Yeah, let us know in the comments down below what you think about these news articles and our takes. And if you have anything you want to add, um, you know, again, I, I think with globalization and as Asian Americans, we find out more about our counterparts in Asia and then them in Asia, they know more about us in America. It's kind of like building this type of uh, kind of cultural knowledge bridge or awareness, I, I suppose. So hopefully, you know, it's just there to build bridges in the future. But anyways, guys, those are your four viral Chinese news articles. Uh, let us know what you think and send us any more that you think we should talk about. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.